Your Ryzen 7 9800X Duty is powerful, but right now you're leaving FPS on the table. With just a few BIOS tweaks, we're gonna unlock smoother gameplay, lower input lag, and even cooler temperatures. Let's go. Even though the Ryzen 9800X Duty is one of the best CPUs for gaming, your motherboard's default BIOS settings are built for stability and not speed. And that just leaves performance on the table. So we're gonna fix all of that and make the CPU behave like it should be for high FPS competitive gaming. So with AMD specifically, especially the Zen 5 and Zen for architecture you want to make sure you're on the latest bios version so the easiest way to check if you're on the latest bios is just type ms info 32 in your windows search bar it's going to bring up system information and you just want to look at your bios version slash date as you can see mine is from march 5th 2025 and then next thing that you want to do once you have noticed what version and what date of bios you're on you're gonna go to baseboard product, press control C on your keyboard, then open up your browser and then open up a new tab and then paste that into there. Then you wanna to go to the support page of your motherboard and you wanna make sure that you're on the latest BIOS version available. So as you can see, version right here says version one M3. If you go back to system information, I am on one M3 right here and the day is around the same thing, March 2025. So this is a really, really easy fix for performance, for bugs, for blue screens, just updating the BIOS to the latest version on AMD because there's been a lot of problems in the older BIOS versions, especially if you're on BIOS versions from 2023 or early 2024. So make sure to update the BIOS before following the optimization guide that's gonna yield you the best results. Now, once you already know that your BIOS is already up to date, we've already updated it, then we can restart our computer and spam the delete key or whatever key is required to head over to BIOS. So what you want to do is you want to press F6 on your keyboard to load optimized defaults if you have this option. However, if you're just on a normal BIOS where F6 isn't an option, just go to save and exit and click load restore defaults or just load UEFI defaults just to make sure that we're working off a fresh slate and you're not working off of anything from different videos or on your own work that could tamper with this video. Then we're going to go to order clocking settings and x3d gaming mode i just want to highlight something for everybody if you're on a ryzen 9 x3d processor i would recommend turning this on however what this is going to do this is going to disable the second group of cores in a ryzen 9 because ryzen 9s are basically either ryzen 5s combined into one so two ryzen 5s into one that's a ryzen 9 7900 x3d for example or there are two ryzen 7s combined into one like the 7950 x3d or 9950 X3D. So X3D gaming mode is gonna help a lot with gaming. However, you are disabling the second group of cores. So you'll only be on, for example, eight cores versus 16 or six cores versus 12. So that, that's if you're on a Ryzen 9, there are ways to just not have that happen. So you just leave this disabled if you don't want that to happen. And then just figure out how to let the games run on the first group of cores in Windows. A little bit of extra setup with that. I'm not gonna go over that in this video just because I'm on the Ryzen 7 98 x 3 d and most of everybody watching is going to be on a Ryzen 7 or under. If you're on a Ryzen 9, test out with the X3D gaming mode, you're going to get way more performance in games, but you are disabling half of your cores and you're disabling SMT. But let's just say that you're not on a Ryzen 9, just leave this disabled. I don't like what it does for normal CPUs just because it disables SMT and causes a little bit of stutters here and there just due to that one factor. We're going to go to advanced CPU configuration and you're going to disable PSS support. This is kind of like a power saving option. So just disable it. NX mode is kind of like a security option. It's very, very useless unless face it requires it or Valorant anti-cheat makes you turn that on. If both of those will make you turn them on, just leave them alone. However, if you don't play those two games like face it, Counter-Strike or Valorant, you can just disable it. Then at the bottom, you want to disable FCH spectrum and this just helps with EMI. Basically, if you enable it, it's going to reduce the effects of EMI on your PC. But if you disable it, it's going to consistently keep your base clock speed on 100. But I would recommend just leaving it disabled for 99% of you. There are some people who would benefit from turning this on, however. Go to AMD overclocking and you want to disable LN2 mode because we're not going to be using this at all. It's completely useless. And then you want to disable this row VRM throttling option. And this just disables any throttling on the VRMs and helps us get better overclocks. SMT control, if you're on a Ryzen 9, disable this for gaming. If you're not on a Ryzen 9, do not disable this. This causes weird stutters and just a lot of hiccups in gaming on a Ryzen 
than seven or under. So don't disable it, just leave it auto. I know a lot of people say, oh, it gives you lower latency. It doesn't really matter. The effects that it causes on games and FPS is super weird and super depending on the PC. Like some people notice it whenever you disable it, some people don't notice it. But for the purpose of this video, just to make everyone completely on the same page, just leave this on auto. Go to Precision Boost Overdrive. And for everybody watching this video, you can set this to advanced. TBO limits set to motherboard and Precision Boost Overdrive Scalar Control set it to manual. You can leave it on 1x and CPU boost clock override set this to enabled positive and type 200. And what this is going to do, it's going to pretty much increase the limit of where Precision Boost Overdrive can boost up towards. So after setting this to 200 megahertz, my CPU will try to boost to 5.5 gigahertz in gaming. Now this is not really an overclock, this just increases the limit of how far Precision Boost Overdrive can go up to. Then go to Curve Optimizer and set this to all cores and set the sign to negative. And usually every single CPU should be able to do at least 10 right here. You could test that with higher, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna set it to 10 because anything higher can cause blue screens, crashes, or just weird stutters in gaming because it's unstable. And this is basically like an undervolt. We're basically undervolting by 10 on the curve. So if you increase it, some of your cores might become unstable because those cores are faster than the rest of the cores and they need more voltage to increase the speed regarding precision boost overdrive. So a lot of complicated stuff I just mentioned right now, but if you just want plug and play option, put it to 10 and ignore it. Then go back twice by pressing escape, then go back one more time, go to AMD, CBS, and global C-state control. This is basically just a power saving option. It sets some of your cores to sleep. I've had some arguments where they've said, if you disable this, your CPU can't boost as high. But on this generation of AMD, I found it to be very, very helpful to save the game. SBM enabled, this is virtualization, just disable it unless you need it for whatever. Then IOMMU, same thing as SVM related to virtualization, so disable it if you don't need it. PCIe ARI support, disable this. And then CPPC dynamic preferred cores, if you're on a Ryzen 9 with an X3D at the end, set this to cache. However, if you're not a Ryzen 9 or you don't have a Ryzen 9 X3D, just leave it on bottom. Let's go down to the bottom and you can just leave everything how it is. Go back, go back again. And you want to set your AXMP or Expo to obviously enable. And then DRAM speed for the purposes of this video, everyone set it to 6,000. Do not set it to anything higher. I know some people have bought 6,400 megahertz sticks, or in my case, I have 7,200 megahertz sticks. These are not going to work on the CPU out of the box. Now, 7,200 should not be used regardless, even if it works or not. 6,400 requires a lot of tuning, and most 9,800 X2Ds and 7,800 X2Ds cannot do 6,400 megahertz just because they just can't, the integrated memory controller just can't handle it. So, the best plug and play option is 6,000. FCLK frequency, you want to set this to 2,000. And UCLK div 1 mode, this is the most important option. You want to set this to UCLK equals memclk without the divided by 2 option, just this. Then you want to scroll down and go to advanced DRAM configuration. And just for the purposes of this video, I recommend setting your TREFI to 32767. This is a super safe value that should work for all motherboards, all RAM sticks, all CPUs. TRRDL is kind of dependent on what RAM sticks you got. If you have 32 gigabytes of RAM or higher, you can just set this to 12 and the one right under it starts at 8. TFOB, as always, set it to 32 and you're good to go from there. Scroll down and right here you want to disable TSME and you want to disable data screen. Now, I'm not disabling power down enable because of a specific reason. If I disable power down enable and keep memory context restore on auto, this is going to cause blue screening uh, issues, common bug. So don't disable power down enable, leave it auto. However, if you want to disable power down enable, you have to disable memory context restore as well, but this is going to make your boot times very, very slow. It's going to take up to two minutes just to boot up your computer. So that's why I'm leaving these two on auto for the purposes of this video. Then go back and go to motherboard settings, go to advanced, and you want to disable MSI driver utility installer. And if you don't use your SATA ports on your motherboard, you can just disable this. However, I do use my SATA ports on this motherboard, so I'm going to keep as media SATA support enabled. Go to PCI subsystem settings, and for the purposes of this video, you could test out with resize bar support disabled and above four G memory disabled. In games like Call of Duty, Fortnite, and I think Valorant, this doesn't help or it makes things worse. Especially in a game like Call of Duty, this just makes your FPS 10 times worse. On Fortnite, I've done some testing and it does the same thing. So resize bar support, I know in every single video that you've seen on YouTube, they tell you to leave it enabled because it helps, blah, 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 blah. However, these guys never do their own testing, never ever hop in a game and actually test it. So if you're playing Black Ops 6, Warzone, Fortnite, Valorant, and some of these popular games, you can pretty much just set this to disabled because you're not losing FPS and you're most likely having more consistent FPS just by disabling it. However, if you do 
do have a game that 100% boosts FPS by enabling this, then by all means, set this to enabled. However, for most of my viewers, this doesn't do anything for their games. Gen mode, max this out, set to gen four or gen five, and do that for every single gen mode and gen switch settings like how I'm doing right now. ASPM control, disable this. This is just basically power saving for your PCIe lanes. So just disable it. Go back, go to integrated graphics configuration, and we're gonna disable the integrated graphics on our CPU because we're not using them when using the dedicated graphics card that we have plugged into our mother. Then go back, go to USB configuration. And if you wanna disable legacy USB support, you can. However, your USB ports, your USB sticks might not be recognized by BIOS if you disable this. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna disable it because I don't need USB stick support on this motherboard. Go back and go to AMD overclocking, press accept, and we're just gonna go to SOC slash uncore OC mode. And just make sure this is set to enabled because this removes some idle power savings. Then go back, go back again, go back one more time, go back two more times, and go to hardware monitor on the right. And this is by far the most important part of this video. You wanna make sure that your fan speeds are maxed out. You wanna make sure every single fan in your PC is blowing at max speed, especially the ones on your CPU cooler. And if you have a software like NZXT or IQ from Corsair, you wanna go in that software and max out your pump speeds and your fan speeds on the CPU cooler because precision boost overdrive and how these CPUs work is that if your temperatures are lower, the CPU will boost higher, AKA you'll get more FPS the lower the temperatures are on your processor. So that's a very, very important step on these CPUs. If you wanna have the best performance, you wanna have the best cooling on these processors. So you wanna make sure that you have at least a water cooler or something of that sort on your CPU in order to get the best performance, especially if you're on a Ryzen 9. Then you can just pretty much close out of this with a C profile on the right, and then just save this as an overclocking profile in case for whatever reason you need to load the settings back up. And then all you have to do from there is press F10 or press play and exit on your BIOS and you press hits on that. So as you can see, we're back in Windows. And right now, as you can see, we're in a screenshot of Black Ops 6 benchmark. And this is pretty much my PC right now, a Ryzen 7 and Android X with an RTX 3090 running on 1080p. These are the Black Ops 6 benchmark results without any of these optimizations. We're getting around 341 average CPU FPS right here, as you can see, 255 on the low first percentile and low first percentile 233. So already pretty good at FPS compared to Intel out of the box. We're already beating Intel if Intel was completely stock and there was nothing done to Intel CPUs. So that's pretty nice. But after tuning everything and after following this guide, you should be able to get results like this around 467 average FPS in CPU, 378 average fifth percentile FPS, and low first percentile FPS 345. Now, just from this alone, you can see we gain around 110 FPS or 120 FPS, somewhere around there, just from doing bio settings, just from casually optimizing the precision boost overdrive and making sure everything is completely solid. Now, I just want to confess that these two screenshots are with everything completely overclocked. So I do have my graphics card overclocked in, in the after picture versus no overclocking on this picture. And also I do have my RAM overclocked at 6,200 megahertz with an infinity fabric frequency of 2067 on the after benchmark. So that does give me a little bit more FPS compared to what you probably are gonna get, but you should expect somewhat similar results on 1080p in this benchmark. So other than that, that's gonna be pretty much it for this video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed and hope you guys got more FPS. Comment down below how much more FPS you got just from following this simple BIOS optimization guide on your Ryzen 7 X2D CPU or your regular Ryzen CPU. Other than that, if you guys want all this done for you, along with PC optimizing, along with PC overclocking, your RAM, CPU, and your graphics card, along with installing this custom Zilli OS on your PC to get the maximum possible FPS without sacrificing compatibility and with have and while having everything working on your computer, then go to the first link in the description and book a PC optimization service. You could look through my X profile and see all the stuff that we've been doing on people's computers. We've been getting crazy results just from casual optimizations to competitive optimizations. We've been giving people 200 plus FPS boosts. We've been reducing their input lag. We've been just doing an insane amount of things on there. So if you wanna see the proof in the pudding, then go to my X profile and just look at the stuff that we've been doing on people's computers. Other than that though, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.